Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. A very easy way to expose Islam or let us say you are a person who do not know anything about Islam. And there is many of, most of people do not know anything actually. Actually even the one who think he knew a lot, like those who make videos in YouTube, uh, they are still ignorant about Islam. But we will share with you a very easy way to expose Islam to be stupid. And we will open our Skype in case any Muhammadan he want to prove us wrong. All of us, we knew that the Quran full of fairy tale stories. And Muhammad, as the Quran described him, the Arab called him an ear. He is an ear. What does that mean? He's a person, uh, you know, anything he hear it he you know he added to the Quran he's an ear literally he's an ear and this is a perfect description of such a man you know the Muslims they call Muhammad uh, illiterate uh, you know for me I don't mind to call him illiterate because illiterate mean ignorant stupid and the Muslims uh, you know supposedly uh, this is how they understand the religion but for me, I see Muhammad illiterate, even if he knew uh, how to read, how to write. If we go in the Quran, in chapter 9, verse number 61, you will see the Quran saying that the, Muslim, the Arab, they call Muhammad, he is an ear. This is in their book. Muhammad, he could not respond uh, except saying, well, okay, yeah, Will he listen to what is best for you? <laughs> so imagine people accusing you that you are a person who copies stories, stupid stories, and you agree with them. And instead of saying to them, no, no, you are wrong. This is what my God told me. But look what he did. He just confessed that he is making up Quran. Did, did you notice what he did? He just confess that he is a liar. He is because what the, if you if you go and read the interpretation, you will see they are accusing him. There's a book. It's called Asbab al Nuzul, which means the reason for the verses to come. The, he hear a story. He put it in the Quran. Muhammad now claiming to be a prophet from God, and he is receiving revelation from God. So what does stupid he do? He say yes, I am an ear. And uh, yeah, you know, I uh, like I give you the best of the news. So he admitted he is receiving news from people, not from God, claiming that this is for your benefit. He listened to what this is Allah saying. Allah is now the 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 the, uh, the lawyer for Muhammad. Among them are men who hurt the Prophet. Okay, how so you you can tell now this is an insult. This is not uh, somebody praising him for being good. This is an insult uh, meant to expose that he is just a, a liar. You know he's still you know he hears stories from people. That's why the Quran have tons of verses saying, "Well, you are just reciting for us the stories which we heard before. Those are nothing but the fabulous of the uh, 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 previous generation." Uh, and so Muhammad. He agree with that. He agree. Yes, you know. You know what? Yeah, I I, I copy stories, uh, but what's wrong with that? But they are saying to him, this is nothing but fairy tales. We heard them long before you, Muhammad. If we go in the Quran right now and we search for the word fairy tales or the word asatir in Arabic, chapter six, verse number twenty-five. Chapter 8, verse number 31. Chapter 16, verse 24. 23, 83. 25, 5. 27, 68. I mean, it's endless. So, the second they recite, we recite for them Quran, what they say, this is nothing but fairy tales of the ancient. Read it. The second Muhammad, he recite the Quran. You know, how many times you heard the Muhammadan saying the Arab were amazed? And by the way, you notice that our number dropped because we just moved the, the, 
the broadcast channel to this channel. I mean, I don't know. People, we told them in title, we are moving to different channel. We put even the the, uh, uh, the image, the thumb of Arabian Prophet account. We put the link. Still, people do not know how to find me. <laughs> and we have an we have Patreon w www patreon com slash Christian Prince. Still, people do not know how to find me. Anyway, this is why I say stupidity is amazing. So when our verses, which mean the Quran, are recited to him, hmm, they say, he say, this is nothing but the fairy tales of the previous. We heard those all. So the Quran confirm that those are tales for kids. It's a fictions. Only foolish people believe in it. And every person who here this is why Muhammad you know when when the people they convert to Islam if, if you go you will check you will find that there's a chapter it's called the chapter of Al-Fatah okay what is that Al-Fatah you know what uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, by the way most of the Muslims most of the uh, Quran chapters the Muslims they change their names uh, like you know al al, al tawbah uh, uh, it's not a tawbah this is Bara'a. But anyway, they have different names. Depend in the Quran you are reading. Uh, but if you go, when uh, when uh, when the victory of Allah, you know, when the victory of Allah uh, came, people, they enter into Islam by like waves. Okay. How come they did not enter Islam when, when they hear the Quran? How come those people did not enter into waves? Into Islam by waves when Muhammad uh, was reciting Quran only when he was victorious in the war even the Muslims thank you Muslims they are uh, adding the, uh, uh, like a bracket to the Quran so when Muhammad he made the conquest against Mecca then everybody in Mecca become a Muslim in, in two seconds so Muhammad, he spent his life trying to, you know, but he could not make them convert to Islam. He killed the one who opposed and the one who is alive. He converted to Islam. And this is how people, they enter like waves. All right. So the story now today is about the seven sleepers. I will open my Skype. If there is any Muhammad that would like to join us. Feel free. Actually, I just uh, saw a video before I go uh, live and a kid, you know, American kid making a video about why Islam is true religion. So I told him, call me. I mean, it's just a stupid. I feel sorry for him. Stupid is amazing. Uh, <clears throat> okay, is, uh, is uh, Sarah? Is Sarah is in the chat? I see she sent me a message. Is she in the chat? Are you in the chat, Sarah? I post something in the comments so I can see you and make you an admin. Sarah, the lady who left Islam, she lived in China. Just make a comment so I can see your text, please. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> uh, my Skype is open. If there's any Muhammad that would like to join us, please feel free. You know, we would be happy. Uh, you know, to see how smart your religion is. All right. I want to see how smart your religion is. So when when they say to Muhammad, "You are nothing in an ear," and Muhammad he confirm. Well, everything, everything in the Quran is a proof that Muhammad is just a fraud. Uh, and the verse itself here confirmed that he's a fraud. He says he listened to you. So it's not Allah who's listening. Do you understand, guys, what my, my point is? Who is the one is supposedly now talking? Is it Allah? What is the accusation? The accusation that he is adding his stories he hear to the Quran. So how Muhammad responds saying Allah told him to tell them, yes, he listened 
to what is best for you. So this is not Allah is the one is listening and he is the one responding. So he confirmed that what he added in the Quran is made by him. Let us go and read the interpretation. Maybe Christian Prince, he got it wrong. Uh, maybe, you know, this is not what it's meant. <clears throat> you know? Maybe they are not saying that he are copying stories and you are taking stories from people before you and you put it in the Quran. Let us see. So, chapter 9, verse number 61. And now the Muslim, they will say, it doesn't say that, C.E.P. You know, I mean, we show them in the screen. We show them their translation. We show them their interpretation. We show them all the garbage they have, and then they say it doesn't. It doesn't say that CP. I mean, can can you can you believe how far the madness of this this uh, this religion? Hmm. What is this? He confess <laughs> that he's guilty. It's like you're like saying to somebody you are a rapist. He says, "Yeah, but I rape I rape a beautiful woman only." Let us see the book of Asbab al Nuzul. And from those who uh, vex the prophet and say. He is only a hearer. Chapter 9, verse number 61, 62. This was revealed about a group of hypocrites, and anyone, by the way, accused Muhammad of something, they are the hypocrite, hmm. who used to harm the mission of Allah. Uh, Allah bless him and, uh, and uh, give him peace. I mean, the guy is dead. Allah will bless him after he die. He, he, by the way, it doesn't say in Arabic, bless him and give him peace. They lie in translation. It says, Allah pray on him and salute him. But by saying him things that he should not say, one of them said, don't you know, don't do this, for we fear that we say might reach him. Listen carefully. Don't say this because we fear that it might reach him. <laughs> and he, listen, and then he punished all of us. This is supposed to be the reason. Uh, and then he says, we will say whatever we wish to say, and when it go to him, he will believe whatever we tell him. Whatever we tell him. For Muhammad is nothing but a hearer. And so Allah, exalt is he. Reveal the verse. All right, and then he says, continue. Uh... About one of the hypocrites whose name, uh, uh, etc., Ibn al Harith, the man, it, uh, and by the way, he always, they ha he have to be a, a bad person because he's a dark skin. No way he is a white man. He is a dark skin. He was a dark skinned red eye, like that, like, man, the guy, he have red eyes. Have you ever, of a man, have red eyes? Anyway, uh, burned in the cheek, and etc. All kind of description, just you know, to, to make the man like he is something. Uh, uh, it, it is this man about whom the Prophet Allah bless him and give him peace whenever want to look at the devil. So Muhammad, when he want to describe the devil, he tell them, look at this black man. Tell them, look at this black man. This is how Muhammad, he see the devil. Let him look at Nabtal ibn al-Harith. This man was a, a tail barrier. He related the words of the Prophet, bless be upon him and give him peace to the hypocrite and he uh, uh, who was told to stop doing this he said indeed muhammad is but a, he, a, he is nothing but a harrier which mean he you know carry story he copy them and uh, believe anything that the people tell him do you see it he believe anything anything doesn't matter H how we can prove that muhammad he believe anything people tell him Do you remember the story of Ajassasa? If we ask the Muslims, where Muhammad he got the story of the Antichrist? Hey Muslims, 
where Muhammad he got the story of the Antichrist? Is it in the Quran? Any Muslim can tell me? If we go right now, we will see where Muhammad he is really a hearer. He is an ear. So anything he listen to, he that's it. He accept the story. He publish it. He's a thief of stories. I will type in Arabic in the Hadith Al Jassasa. That's all. I'm not going to search for anything. Here we go. <laughs> a guy, he said with Muhammad, he claimed that he was with a bunch of men in the sea. And in 30 days, they were in the sea and they lost. We will not show you a da'if hadith. We will show you the strong one. <laughs> like, you see, this is strong hadith. Sahih. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, this man, he came to Muhammad. He told him a story. Muhammad, he copied the story. And now the story is part of Islam. Look at this story. This is Sahih Muslim. Narrated to me from the hadith from 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 the Messenger of Allah, etc. 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 And then you know blah 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 blah. But let me read, you know, the, go to where the where the story starts really. Uh, Muhammad suddenly, after he heard the story from this man, he said, Everybody stay, stay, stay. Stay, stay in your place, stay, please. Okay, why? Allah Messenger know best, he said. By Allah, I have not made you assemble for extortion or by warm, uh, warning, warming, but I have detained you here for Tamim ad Dari, a Christian who came to the Prophet to accept Islam. This, this person, he want to save his ass from being killed. So he decided to be a hypocrite and told Muhammad, I want to be a Muslim. And now he gave Muhammad a story. And the story is involving Muhammad. He told me anything which agree with what I was telling you. About what? About him being a prophet. About the Dajjal. That's him. He narrated to me that he had sailed in a ship along 30 men from Bani etc and then he been tossed by the waves and for you know in the ocean for a month and then the waves took them to near an island and the ocean stopped them there by the sunset and there they found a beast her name is a Jassasa she is a woman she cannot you cannot notice which hair which her face which her ass because she is covered by hair totally like a bear and the story go on and go on. So Muhammad, he took the story from this guy. And according to the story, a Dajjal was exist in the time of Muhammad. A Jassasa told them, this beast, go to the monastery. There's a monastery. A Dajjal, he lived in a monastery. And he was chained by a chain from his legs and his hands. And he was flying in the air. Read carefully. And then when they went there to the monastery, he found a well-built person there with his hands tied to his neck and having iron shackles between his two legs up to the ankles. We said, we upon thee, who are you? And he said, you so would soon come to know about me. But tell me, who are you? That this Dajjal who is supposedly going to claim to be the Christ who can tell you what you hide according to Muhammad? You do not know who those guys. You do not know. According to Muhammad, this guy, he can tell you even the unseen. Uh, we said we are people from Arabia, and it's, I mean, you can read the story. And, and at the Dajjal, he asked him if Muhammad became a prophet or not. So Muhammad, he took the story, he put it, he published it. Every Muslim now believe it. He did not check the guy. Do you have witnesses? Where is the 30 men who was with you? Do you have one witness? 
just because the guy he said that the Dajjal asked about you Muhammad Muhammad he accept the story and the story is a true story and the funny is this guy is asking about people of Gog and Magog if they pass by Tabaraya or not he's asking about the Euphrates River so the Dajjal is exist in the time of Muhammad and soon he is going to come out. Look what it says here. <clears throat> he said to them, he informed them about, uh, 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 about the lake of Tabaraya. We said, which aspect do you want to know? He said, there is water in it. They said, yeah, there's a lot of water, man. Thereupon he said, oh, okay, I think it would be soon become dry. Soon. Do, do, do you see the word? So Muhammad is a stupid. Soon the lake of Tabaraya will become dry. And then why? Why is it going to become dry? Because Gog and Magog will walk by it. And they will drink all the water. Soon. My friend, the one who keeps saying, can you give me a source? Can you give me source? Can you give me source? I mean, don't you see we have a topic? Are you a kid? What's wrong with people? At least let me finish what I'm saying. And then I say, anyone have a question? And then you give me the question. Use your brain for a second. I'm reading in the screen. Do you think I'm going to look at the chat even? Unbelievable. So he said, inform me about the lake of Tabaraya. We said, okay, what do you want to know? It doesn't have water. Yes, it have water. Soon it's going to be dry. He again said, inform me about the spring of Zakor. They said, which aspect you want to know? He said, <laughs> the chain person, there is water in it. Look, there is there is connection between the water and Gog and Magog and Muhammad, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the time. It does um, uh, uh, irrigate the land. We said uh, yes. There is a lot of water in the Zakar. Like this, like, what the heck? And then he said, "Inform me about any literate prophet. What has he done?" We said. He has came out of Mecca and he has settled in Yathrib in Medina. He said, do the Arab fight against him? We said, yes. And he deal with like, you know, did he deal with them? He says, yeah, they overcome with him. Thereupon he said to us, this is really actually happened. They, be, they become Muslims, all of them. He said, yes. Mm. Then he said, thereupon he says, if so, that is better for them. Imagine that the guy, his name is a Dajjal, which means the liar, is advising people to follow Muhammad. Have you ever, this is why Muhammad is a stupid. I mean, shouldn't you ask yourself, how you call the guy, the Dajjal, which means the biggest, biggest ever liar, and then the Dajjal is saying you should follow Muhammad. Do you guys do you understand my, my 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 point? How we are saying this guy is the most evil, the most liar, the most deceiving, the most scary, and now he is saying, yeah, good for them. <laughs> Imagine I say. Uh, Joe Biden is the most evil idiot man. And then I said to you, oh, are you following him? Good for them, good for them. But what the heck? They, they are doing the right thing. The Dajjal himself is advising people to follow Muhammad. That is telling you who's Muhammad then. He must be a Dajjal too. And then they say they should know and they should obe be obedience to him. Not only he said, follow them, the better for them. No, they should be obedience. 
I'm giving going to tell you about myself. I am the 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 jail, and I would be soon permitted to get out soon. If we go back to the Quran, now we understand what a, what an ear he is mean. He is an ear. The guy he just told him the story fifteen minutes before the prayer. He heard the story from the man. He he went to the high uh, 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 location so he can speak to the Muslims, and he started telling them the story as the guy he just told him, and he took it for granted. And soon the Dajjal, he would get out. How soon? Soon. The same as the chapter of Al-Qamar where it says the, the, the moon is split asunder and the, the judgment day is near. Actually, it doesn't say near. It says uh, uh, which is a poetry taken from Ural Qais. Exactly as it is. He put it in the Quran. Overall, Qais, he saw a beautiful woman, he liked her. So he say, when she come in the night, she is like the the, 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 the sky is split and the moon come as, uh, uh, left as asunder with the light. Muhammad took the poetry and he put it as it is in the Quran. And this is the additional proof that Muhammad is a fraud. If we go, <laughs> and the Muslim, they delete it just to fight, you know, the proof. <laughs> Any book in the Middle East posting the poetry of Imr al Qais. It's forbidden to be sold, to be sold. Forbidden totally. This is the poetry of Imr al Qais. Beautiful poetry. The verse take, taken as it is. Muhammad, he changed only one word. Instead of Danat, he added Qtarabat, which is way, Danat is way more strong. You can compare it with the Quran. And then he took the second part. I mean, the whole poetry become a Quran. And the list goes on. If we go right now, let me open the Quran so we can compare and we can laugh. <clears throat> we will go to the chapter of the moon. Let us read it and laugh together. Until now, we don't have any text from any Muslim. I will check my Skype again to see if there is anyone. <coughs> uh, where is the Qamar? All right. Compare. Uh, let me let me take a screenshot. I need to find a better program. Can they display the the, the uh, like you know the text as it is without. 
you know, like you know, when you open it in the computer, it have like a big frame which was would not allow me to show. Let us see how we can do that. I can't even make it smaller with this stupid thing. And if we put it here, we will lose. Hmm. Okay, let's see. All right, this is the best we can do, what we can do. Compare between the image you see in the top and this line here. Let me line it up for you again. I will change the color, make it a blue. There's only one word changed. Here it says Tharabat in the Quran. Here it says Danat, which is way more strong as an Arabic word to use. Exactly the same sentence. And then the rest of the chapter, you know, full of verses, Muhammad, he took it from everywhere. And this is why they call him an ear but there is an the verse today we are going to talk about is none of those actually this is just like introduction to you to show you how this man he is nothing but a thief and he's a silly thief stupid this is why they keep saying to him we heard this before we know that before the Quran is not a poetry the Arabic poetry is way way you know it's very strong like if you read this guy Imrul Qais poetry it's so beautiful you read the Quran is so silly, so stupid. And let us show you some example. Actually, any verse in the Quran, and I change any Muslim, any Muslim, to show me one statement in the Quran is not stupid. In Arabic, in a grammar, in everything. But let us go and see this one. They ask Muhammad, how many are they, the seven sleepers? I mean, I mean, they just told you the seven sleepers, you idiot. Why Muhammad don't dare to say there are seven? Anyone have a can help us think about it? Why? They told him how many there are the seven sleepers. Any Muhammadan can tell us, help us. They told him how many there are the seven sleepers. I remember once in the month of Ramadan, they have a program in Saudi Arabia uh, TV. Uh, they ask a question in the street. If you answer the question, you get one ounce of gold. As simple as that. So the question was, could air condition New York? Air condition what? York. What is the name of the air condition? The Abdul, he think air condition York. What the name of the air condition? Okay, time is up. Next person. Nobody knows. I mean, he just told you the name. He just told you air condition York. What is the air condition name? So imagine I say to you air condition Mitsubishi. What is the name of the air condition? Still you do not know. And obviously this program is paid by the company to promote their air condition. So they will give an ounce of gold for a few people in the program, whoever answer, which is a very easy, stupid question. Air condition your, what is the name of the air condition? Um, is it uh, like, is it two, uh, two split uh, or one unit? You know? <laughs> So this is Muhammad. He, they came to him. They say, "In the seven sleepers, how many they are?" Muhammad here, he is being smarter. Somebody is asking, "What is the name of CP channels?" He is in my channel. He's asking, "What is the name of my CP channel?" All right, Lord have mercy. Because they accused him that he is a hearer already, 
and his smell is all over the place that he copies stories as it is. So now Muhammad decided to be smarter. They told him the seven sleepers, he thought maybe they are tricking him. Maybe they are not seven. So what he do? Read carefully. Some they say, uh, this is Allah is talking supposedly. Allah is answering the question. What is the question? The seven sleepers, how many there are? The seven sleeper, how many there are? And Muhammad now is afraid to answer based on what he knew because they will get him busted. And remember, they accuse him already that he is an earring. He's an ear, the guy, he whatever he hear, he put it. So now to avoid the embarrassment, he come with a solution which is going to expose him more. Some they say, actually, if you read the Arabic, by the way, you will see how stupid the Quran. Sayaquluna thalatha. What do you mean? Say? They will say three. They did not say. They will say. What do you mean you, they will say? They will say three and their dog is number four. Translation says, some say, that, no. They will say. <laughs> See, this is anyone who speak Arabic. The first letter here, seen. This is the scene of al mustaqbal which means so for something will happen in the future. So Muhammad is preparing himself for the pupu. He, 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 if he give them the number, they will say, oh, they are three, and their dog is number four. Oh, they are four, and their dog is number five. So read with me carefully how Muhammad he try. Let us see if we change the translator. Hold on. What will happen? This is Hilali, Muhammad Hilali, and Muhammad Khan. Let us see another idiot. <coughs> Uh, which one? A top. Mm. <laughs> see, I just changed the translator randomly. Do you see the translation? Some will say, not some say. There's a huge difference. Some will say. So Muhammad preparing himself for the outcome of the number he will give. Because they will say there are three and their dog is number four. Others, they will say, oh, they are four and their dog is number five. <laughs> but look at this stupid chapter which is coming from God. So some will say, they are three and their dog was the fourth. And this is a mistake in Arabic, horrible mistake. Even in English, you don't say, and the dog is number four. You, you don't say three men and the dog is number four. You say three men and one dog. You don't count the dog as number four, not in Arabic, not in any language. And the word dog, by the way, have a different story because the Quran did not come with dog. It was kali'ahum, not kalbahum. And even Muslim scholars agree that the real word is not kalbahum, which means a dog. It was kali'ahum because all of us, we knew that dog in Islam is something dirty. So how come now that dog is a good guy? So this, the real story in the seven sleepers that there is and a seven, seven Christians been discriminated and the angel of God was guarding the cave. Not a dog. Imagine there's a king chasing them and the dog will stop the king and his army. A little dog. This is why you see the Quran saying, Basit on the Ra'ihi. His two arms is open. Dogs don't have arms. They have four legs. So he opened his wings to cover them, protect them in the cave. This is what the story is. And this is a story exists in the Christian culture. And this is a fiction story, even though some people, they take it seriously.
So Mr. Muhammad, the earring, the ear, the hearer, he took the story. He messed up the story. There's no dog. There's an angel. And this is a story very well known, very famous in the Middle East. Even there is an area where people used to go and do what is called the pilgrimage, you know, to it, to the cave. This is how naive people, they believe in anything. This is a story written by a Christian man about, you know, like, you, you, don't, you know, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> Today you are discriminated, tomorrow things will be better. This is not a real story. Muhammad, he took it, he put it in the Quran. And then the story changed from seven sleepers and their angels to nobody knows how many and their dog. And this is the Muslim drawing. And for sure, the Abdul, they sleep differently from the Christians, as you know. And you know, the funny is that all the miracles, which is amazing miracle, they happen only with the Christians. I mean, why there is no one miracle even with the companion of Muhammad? The Quran, the Hadith confirm that the disciple of Jesus, they have tons of miracles. Those are not even disciples of Jesus. God himself want to protect them. Just because they believe in Jesus. If you remember, there's a story. The Muslim, they spread around about Muhammad. When he ran away, he went to a cave. And then the spider, he made a whip. Closing the, 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 the cave. So when they came to look, they said, oh, there's nobody here because the, you know, the spider have a whip in it. Anyway, there's a person who just entered here. This is a story nowhere can be found. It's a fabrication, totally. And this is a story taken from the Old Testament. And I made a video about it before, if you can, if you can search for it. So Muhammad is a hearer. Any story he hear, he take it, he put it in the Quran. But now we have a bigger problem. They are asking how many they are. And listen carefully. The question is not about nuclear or science. Answering the question will not hurt Allah. They are not asking about the day of judgment. They are not asking uh, how many people will go to heaven, how many people will go to hell. They are not asking any of those questions. They are asking a simpler question about people who live with me before us. Good Christians who went to a cave, how many they are? That's it. I mean, what is the problem? If there is any problem, I don't see any problem. A Muslim text me, he said he want to debate about the Quran is preserved. <laughs> I don't know if he will answer or not. Let us see. So we can laugh. So how many there are? He don't dare to answer because he knew they accuse him already that he is an ear. He's a liar. He's copying. So if he says seven, they will say, we know, everybody knows there are seven. Everybody knows there are seven. I mean, this, this picture we showed you, written before Muhammad even was born, or drawing. This is an ancient image. Seven. <laughs> they are not eight. They are not five. They are not six. Even they have names for them. Each, they knew the name of every person of them. And they are Greek. And they knew the city of it.
So Muhammad was scared to be exposed by an answer he gave because he have already many experienced being busted. So what he do now? Look at this drama. Some they say they are three and their dog is number four. And others they say they are five and their dog number six. There's nobody said any of this. Only guessing blindly. They are guessing blindly. And other they say they were seven and their dog is number eight. Okay, are they guessing blindly too? Notice here, he did not say those are guessing blindly because this is the most accurate answer. <laughs> he say, say, uh, Prophet, say, only Allah knows their number. Like, what the heck? Okay, what, what is the number? Yeah, actually, I saw a video of a person asking a Kurdish guy speaking to Lili Dawa, sister Lili Dawa, and he said to her, okay, how come the Quran could not, Allah could not answer a simple question about the seven sleeper? What Ali Dawa said to him? Brothers and sisters, Allah, he don't have to say everything. Why we need to answer everything? Allah don't want to tell you the numbers. <laughs> Look at this. So why you make even a verse about it? This is God. God who created the whole universe is telling us some they say I mean this is a this is not even a, a five years old you know girl speaking to her friends about how many cats under the bed this is not even a speech of an adult is that how adult they speak so when they asked uh, Lili Dawa how many they are brothers and sisters why we expect the quran to answer everything we have to accept allah don't want to tell us the numbers so what the problem so what the point okay i did read this story now what is the point and not only that look the stupidity it says allah knows best their number only oh, oh what 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 okay and actually the translation is false by the way it says Allah knows their number and if you only know number so what the problem the people knows already what is the number only few people know their numbers as well so what is the number This is how stupid this religion is. And this is the easiest verse in the Quran to prove that this is cannot be from God. I mean, is it going to hurt Allah to tell us, okay, there are seven? But because Muhammad already been accused that he is an ear, he take anything he hear, he put it in the Quran. He heard the Jews speaking about the flying carpet of Solomon, flying horse of Solomon. So uh, tons of stories. Muhammad right away, psh, he, he made, uh, shish kebab in the Quran. And the funny is, this guy who texts me in Skype says he want to debate me about the preservation of the Quran. My friend, the Quran is preserved with stupidity. I, I, do I care even if the Quran is preserved or not? Why I want to debate about a stupid book? Already what we have in it is enough to destroy anything can make it a book. Secondly, you idiot. Do you even have the Quran? You don't have a single script of the Quran. When one Christian donated a piece of leather to the University of Birmingham, the Muslim, they make celebration around the world. And by the way, it's not even the Quran. The date of the leather goes to be for Muhammad. The ink is not. The words is not. And it's not the same Quran today. We have the Quran of Samarkand, we have the Quran of Yemen, we have the Quran. Even Ayesha, she said, the chapter of Al-Ahzab used to, equal, to be equal to the chapter of Al-Baqarah. How many verses in Al-Ahzab? Shall we check? This is Al-Ahzab today. We go to the end of it. How many? 73. 73. And Aisha, she said, this is used to be equal to which one? 
to the cow. Let us go to the cow. This is the biggest chapter in the Quran. How many the cow? Mm, mm. I mean, even the names they fabricate them. Uh, all those names, by the way, Muhammad, he never called them those names. But anyway, uh, you go here to the end. 286 verses. How many is missing, guys? Somebody give me the number. How many is missing? <laughs> what is missing is almost in the size of the Quran. In one chapter alone. But I don't want to debate about if it is preserved or not. Like, okay, who can recite for me the chapter of uh, uh, breast feeding for adult? Nobody. Okay, what about stoning to death? Oh, we know, we remember this one. So why is not in the Quran? Should we follow it? They said to you, oh, this this is uh, abrogated by recitation, but not by, uh, uh, sorry, abrogated by, uh, 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 by writing and recitation, but not by ruling. What the heck? Why you do that? I mean, if you have to follow it, why we take it from the Quran? Do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us and tell us why the Quran and not to forget to mention all the stories like chapter of the cave alone is the most funny stupid chapters enough alone to prove that Islam is made by a mule. Not even a human. Now, I will go to the question, the guy who was repeating all over, 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 CP, can you give me the source of the story when Muhammad taught his neighbor was an angel? I don't know what story you are talking about. Muhammad, he thought his neighbor is an angel. Where you get this from? I don't remember such a story. Maybe you are misunderstanding. Muhammad, he claimed that the angel came to him in the look of not his neighbor, his boyfriend, Dahiel Kalbi. <clears throat> Let us see if we can find it here in this website. And this is additional proof that Muhammad is nothing but a fraud. I mean, the angel, he took the look of the boyfriend of Muhammad, who is supposedly the most handsome guy, uh, you know, uh, uh, in town. Let us see. <clears throat> so now we have two, 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 two Dahya al Kalbi in the town. Two of them. You know, in Islam, there's, by the way, and this is an additional story about cloning. Jesus being a clone. Jibreel being cloned by the Shaitan. Uh, Jibreel, he cloned Dahya al Kalbi. Everybody clone everybody. Jesus himself being cloned by one of his disciples. Do you see how cloning works in Islam? So Jibreel, he came in the image of Dahya al-Kalbi, as you see. And by the way, Muhammad, he described Jesus how he looked like. I don't know if you can read with me and love. So Jesus, 
he was a, a well-built person with the curly hair. <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh, all right. I saw Dahya nearest the resemblance to him, who, uh, uh, you know, the <laughs> Jibreel. Oh, boy. Uh, uh. Uh, stupidity is amazing, what we can say. Do we have any Mohammedan? Anyone? Any brave Muhammad that would like to make a statement about what we said? Nobody? No, we don't want people to pretend to be Muhammad. And this is what the Muslim do. We will not allow that. If you are a Muhammadan and you are proud to be a Muslim, please feel free and you can join us. Everything in Islam is just a fiction story, like the Black Stone. The Black Stone story exists before Islam. And Muhammad and his father and his grandfather and before him all generations, they have stones and they kiss and they worship. The major migration of idols happened to Mecca when the Christians took over Jerusalem. And then when Constantine, the King Constantine, he went to Jerusalem, he found in the side of Jerusalem, not in Jerusalem, a huge location of Bedouin people placing their idols. So he ordered his soldiers that he didn't want to see idol here no more. So what they did, they carry their idols and they walk with them to the desert of Saudi Arabia where there is no Roman. Do we have any Muhammadan? Jesus wasn't handsome. Read Isaiah 53. Well, no, Isaiah 53 is not about Jesus being handsome or not. It's about people will not like him. He will not be pleasant to them. This is why they want to crucify him. You, you people read the... Read the text strongly. This is a this is a book of God. This is not about uh, you know somebody look good or not. Why why people why why like why men they want him? I mean, is he what? Why uh, people they don't know how to read. Uh, can you explain? Muslim wanted to know if Muhammad was sent after his death or he will be resurrected what do you mean sent after his death saint saint after his death what do you mean saint like he came up no muslim don't believe in that muhammad told him uh, he would be the first one to be resurrected in the day of judgment <clears throat> Let me find the reference. And the story of Muhammad actually he mentioned is very stupid. And I will tell you why. I, I, I will find the reference uh, first so I can show you why Muhammad is really stupid.
Muhammad is a very they have a low IQ, uh, and this is why after any story he's saying, after reading it for two seconds, you will see how stupid. So, uh, guys, read with me carefully. Anyone notice what is the mistake here? Let us see who of you is really, uh, you know, he have a very good observation and he is deep in thinking. The prophet said the people will fall unconscious on the day of resurrection. And suddenly I will see Moses. Okay, let us show you another. Uh, this is not the whole. Yeah, this is not the whole hadith. Hold on. Sometime the Muslim they cut off the whole story. This is not the whole story. No, hold on. <clears throat> Let us see this one. I shall be uh, the preeminent among the descendant of Adam, the first from whom the earth will be cleft open, the first intercessor. Translation here is not really accurate. He will be the first one who will come from the grave. As you see, the first one who will come out from the grave. Do you see it? But Muhammad, because he cannot keep his mouth shut, in different hadith he said that he will be the first one who come out of the grave and he will see Moses holding something. Holding the throne of Allah. So how you will be the first one who is coming out from the grave, but Musa is there before you? In this hadith here it says, the messenger of Allah said, I am the first one whom the earth will be split, then Abu Bakr, then Umar. It's not even Musa, it's not even uh, Isa, it's not even Abraham. Is Omar and Abu Bakr? <laughs> Do you see the fraud? I mean, why Allah will care to take Abu Bakr and Omar before Abraham? Any Muslim can tell me? Is Abu Bakr and Umar more important than Abraham, Isa, Moses, Aaron, Isaiah, Abu Bakr and Muhammad is giving gift, you know, like, okay, I mean, it's good to give a promises in heaven, in heaven, brother, you know, I will give you endless penis, what do you want more? Every Abdul at that time looking at his, like, what the heck, is it going to be endless? This one will be endless, will it grow? Is that fertilizer a thing? So Muhammad, he will be the first one to, uh, uh, you know, look, look, look at this one. Look at this hadith. Read with me and laugh. And this is actually a, a, a question I asked long time. I was just a kid. I asked the teacher. I said, sir, I have a question. He said, not you again, not you again. What do you want? You know, put your hand down. I said, I, I will not, you know, I insist, I, my hand is up. So he said, okay, okay, what is this? What, this is very easy. I said, so how the prophet, he will be the first one to be resurrected and yet he will see uh, he will see Moses holding the throne of Allah. He just opened his eyes, as you explained to us, the earth will be open. This is what the teacher said. The earth will be open. The prophet, he opened his eyes right away. He said, oh, Moses, holding the throne of Allah. So how he is the first one is going to be resurrected, yet Moses is there alive.
He looked at me. He said, okay, we can answer this, but it's too much for you. You are too young to answer it. I said, are we listening? You know, explain it to us, explain it to us, sir. And, that, and the, the, the kids, they start saying, yes, sir. Explain to us how that happened. He says, this is not your level. This is for bigger. When you get older, when you become a, like, a, you go to university, you became adult, we can explain those things for you. And then one of the Muslim kids, he said, sir, why you don't say you do not know how to answer it? <laughs> A Muslim teacher, <laughs> he have his umbrella. Honest to God, he have the, the old umbrella, you know, like those one with the stick. You know, <laughs> he took the umbrella and, and he hit him. He said, "I know the answer. You stupid idiot! You take the side with this Christian guy trying to fool you. This is very easy to answer." But he, you should see his his face. He's like he's uh, he was blonde. He, his face red. Uh, you know, he's getting so angry, saliva is coming out like, like, like a dog, and yet he cannot answer. How Musa is there, yet Muhammad is the first one to be resurrected. And then that kid, who the teacher did beat him, <laughs> he brought his father the second day. <laughs> I mean, this story became a drama. The father, he came because, because he, did, he hit him, you know, he hit him in his head. And he injured him with the with the uh, with the tip of the umbrella. So uh, the, the father second day came. He said, "All what he asked him for, he is not insulting. He's asking a question. Uh, uh, you know." He said, "Why? If you don't know how to answer, just say I do not know how to answer." He can refute him and say, "Okay, this is the answer." And then the father. You know, he said to them, this is what the kid, he told me, because they brought the kid as a witness for what happened. So the kid is there, uh, uh, the father is there, the principal and the teacher. So he said, okay, well, this is what happened yesterday. Ask the question you asked to the teacher. So the kid, he repeat again, what happened? And then they called for me because I'm the one who asked the question. So I came and I said, what the, the principal, he said, what was your question? I said, sir, I said, uh, how come Musa is there? If the prophet, because he, the teacher, he explained to us that the the prophet, the first one will, will come from the grave, even when he before even stand, he opened his eyes and he saw Musa holding the chair. So my question was, uh, how come Musa is there if he is is the prophet, if the first one to be resurrected? So he said, okay, this is what all what you said. I said, yeah, and the teacher agreed, and then he said to the second one, okay, you you now tell us what was uh, your complaint. So he said, well. Uh, he said, uh, I said, why, you know, why you don't answer the question if you know the answer? Uh, why you don't say you do not know the answer? And that's it. And then he did beat me. So the, the, the father, he said to the teacher, uh, okay, well, let us see if this teacher, he knew the answer or not. What about you answer us now? They are kids. You said to them, they are kids and you cannot answer them because they will not understand. Well, we are adult. Give us the answer or prove that you have an answer. A moment of silence. The principal, he looked at him. He said, what? What do you think? He said, these things is from the unseen. We do not know. This is the answer. He said, I just tell them that. Why did it beat the kid? Just tell them this is the, from the unseen. Suddenly it became the unseen. It is the unseen. It's from Allah knowledge. That's it. So it, it was like you have to be growing adult. You have to be a, a growing man when you are adult. Like, you know, then you will understand. This is how embarrassing the stories of Muhammad. Muhammad is the first one in this hadith. Muhammad, Muhammad is the first. Abu Bakr is the second. The third is Umar. Why Umar is the third, by the way, Muslims? Poor Omar. This is remind me when Egypt won the, the, the basketball game in the in the third, uh, I think it was Egypt. You know, they have a military, a military game uh, uh, for basketball. And tens of thousands went in the streets celebrating that Egypt is number three in the champion of basketball. In the world champion, army champion, 
But there's only three teams. So what Egypt will do will be number four. They are dancing in the street. Allahu Akbar. Egypt is number three. Egypt, Allahu Akbar. And TV make programs about it. How amazing the celebration, the victory. They are number three. But there's three teams only. Only three teams. And they are number three and they are celebrating being the third in the world. Madness. Do we have any Mohammedan? He want to be the, th the third in the world? <laughs> Well, at least they are not fourth, you know. I mean, come on, they are number three. Come on. Now, we have to admit, you know, anything in the, in the, in the football, they involve religion with it. And when they lose, they don't blame, like, I mean, okay, you know, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi la raji'un. The Quran says that all disaster happen because of Allah. So why you worship Allah? Why Allah want to make a disaster for people who took Ayah Sophia? I mean, you just added a big mosque, which is a big, huge church. Why Allah want to reward you like this? And by the way, one of you asked me, he said, uh, the, the vision you saw before about an earthquake in Turkey, it happened. I said, no, it did not yet. I believe it did not. The vision I saw, it was way more massive, scary. I saw the earth moving like waves of ocean, honest to God. I saw people laying down dead, screaming. I mean, something very horrible. So this is, this is not the one I saw. And I hope it's not going to happen. But this is what I saw. The one I saw, the earthquake I saw in Turkey, it, was, it is the most scary thing. Towns, cities become dust. Yeah. <clears throat> no, the Quran say clearly, any uh, musibah, uh, uh, you know, uh, all all the musibah, all calamity, all all disaster belong to Allah. You know, Allah. You see all of those verses, and the Quran actually make it clear. That when a disaster happened to you because of what your hands did. So why Allah is upset from the Muslims? Read it. And if we had not sent to the people of Mecca, this by the way doesn't say all of this is uh, the bracket is false. Okay. Uh case a uh, uh, calamity should size them. I mean, what what kind of translation this trans this guy is using Google something? Let us use another idiot. You know, actually, I find it very funny that Yasser Kadhi, he said that Yusuf Ali don't speak Arabic. <laughs> but read carefully. Uh, oh, this guy, he added Quraysh. Let us see a different one. The Muslim, they keep saying the Quran is for every time, but then they say this is for Quraysh. <laughs> Otherwise, if a disaster should affect them because of what they or their own hand have sent before them, they might say our Lord was sent. I mean, guys, anyone understand anything? Is that English a mercy? وَلَوْلَا أَن تُصِيبُهُمْ مُصِيبًا بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيهُمْ what the heck is that? Where is the cheese? I'm changing translators to see if I can find something we can understand. It has used a different one, Itani and Allah. Otherwise, if calamity be, uh, be, uh, befall on uh, uh, them as a result of what their hand has a perpetrated, per uh, per per this is a new English word, they would say, Our Lord, if only had sent us a messenger. <laughs> I 
<laughs> this is Quran. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and look in, in Arabic here it says, So look, the Muslim translate and uh, we establish a narration in Arabic it says Qurunan Qurunan. You cannot say this is about a century. Ansha'na qurunan. How that can be century? Ansha'na. Do you build centuries? Stupidity. Anyway, do we have any Muslim would like to show us something smart in the Quran? I don't know why, but since I've been uh, watching your videos, I try to challenge sheikhs. They always seem scared. Well, you know, the only one who call us actually is the one who have no career to lose. And if they have a career to lose, they don't, they hide their name, so they will not be known. Do we have any Muhammad that would like to say anything? Anyone? Actually, there is a there is an old debate uh, happened in the time of Muhammad. You know, the Quran is full of stupid stories. And Muhammad told the Muslims that the bird Al-Hudhud, which is mentioned in the Quran, chapter 27, verse number 20, when Suleiman, he was checking the birds, he had an army of genie, an army of a human, an army of uh, birds, uh, chickens. One of the birds, his, he is al uh, the, the, the hudhud. In Arabic, it says hupu. I'm not sure if I'm saying the word correctly. I don't know if you know how the bird looked like. Let me show you. By the way, this is a lucky bird. You see, his, his the fiction story protected this bird in the Middle East. No Muslim dared to kill it. See how lucky you can be, even as an animal, because of a fiction story? That's it. Muhammad, he mentioned it. This guy was serving Prophet of Allah. So this guy is a Captain Hudhud. <laughs> so, uh, uh, according to Muhammad, this bird, he can see... Uh, water under the ground in the deep earth so a muslim asked ibn abbas he said to him well how come then if he can see what is under the ground under the dirt how come then a little child can put some seed in a trap and covered the trap with some dust and this bird he fell into the trap and we capture him Ibn Abbas respond by saying may Allah curse you may Allah destroy you may Allah bring calamity on you may Allah make you blind <laughs> may Allah make <laughs> What the heck? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you see what happened when you debate them and you get them busted? So this is a smart Muslim. He decided to use his brain, not his ass. So he said to himself, well, if this is a bird, you know, he have all this qualification. He can see under the ground. Well, you know what? I mean, then how in the world, uh, you know, uh, we can put a trap, cover it by some dirt, and put some seed in the top, and this poor bird, he come, he doesn't see it. It doesn't make any sense. And right away the answer is, may Allah curse you. May Allah destroy you. And actually you find that in Ibn Kathir, the story. 
This is the chapter 27, verse number 20, 21. Mujahid said, and etc. Blah, 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 blah. It says here, Ibn Abbas, that the hub was an expert who used to show Solomon where the water was if he was out in the open land and needed water. The hupu would look for the water for him in various start, uh, starta of the earth, just as a man look at things on the surface of the earth. He would know how uh, uh, he would know just how far below the surface, below the surface, the water was. This guy he have a GPS uh, uh, laser, he have a sensor. He can even measure how many meter under the ground you can find water. All right. So when the hoop hoop showed him where the water was, Suleiman would command the jinn and to dig. So the bird he say, "Here, here, Suleiman, see it." This is Ali one not the bird. They have the same voice. Here, here, dig here, and then the genies they dig and they find the water. Then uh, one of the uh, Muslim he said to Abdul Abbas one day. Abdullah ibn Abbas told a similar story and among the people was a man and by anyone he questioned Islam the Muslim called him Khawarij Khawarij always presents something bad Khawarij means the outsider which means the one who they are like they are not really convinced you know uh, whose name was Nafi ibn Azraq al Azraq who was often used to raise objections read carefully he raise objection to Ibn Abbas, he said to him, sound like a smart guy, huh? Stop, Ibn Abbas. You will be defeated in this with me in this debate now, in this argument today. Ibn Abbas, right away, when he heard this guy is talking, he made poo-poo. Look, what the heck? Ibn Abbas, he said, why? Nafi, he said, you are telling me that the hoopoo can see water beneath the ground. But any boy can put seed in a trap and cover the trap with dirt and the hoopoe will come and take the seed. So the boy can catch him in the trap. How Ibn Abbas he answer? May Allah curse you. May Allah destroy you. May Allah kill you. May Allah make you blind. May Allah make you have cancer. May Allah make you have diarrhea. May Allah cut your penis. May Allah make you lose your teeth. Like what the heck? He start cursing, cursing him, asking Allah to bring disasters on him. And then the guy, when he, this happened, he said, okay, 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 okay. I will, by Allah, I will never dispute with you anymore about, about anything in the Quran. Do you see it? You won, that's it, you won. <clears throat> The guy got scared. Oh man, he will, they will kill me now. He could not refute him. He could not answer him about his lies and fictions. So right away, they start cursing the guy. And, you know, may Allah kill you. May Allah destroy you. May Allah, you know, may Allah make you blind. The guy, he said, okay, I'm convinced, I'm convinced, I, you know, by Allah, I will never dispute with you concerning anything in the Quran. And this is how the guy was refuted. And this is why nobody in the Middle East can debate the Quran. Who can debate the Quran? Anyone dare to debate the Quran? <laughs> we dare. We laugh at it. <laughs> And by the way, one of you said to me, should we make a donation to help people who they have an earthquake problem? M me, myself, I support making donation to help any people who need. But I tell you, my friend, those, those are thieves. The one who will receive the donations, they are thieves. Do you know how much donation the Palestinians, they receive every year for education, for building schools, even food, even milk for the babies, and now. Until now, since their war happened 70 years with Israel ago, until now, their school is built by donation. They get salary. They get beef, canned beef, every family, milk, 
All of this is sold in the street, in the black market. The leaders of Hamas, they take all the money, they build villas, everybody has four wives, 20 kids, and uh, and all those assistants will be sold in the market. Even closing you sent by Salvation Army, do you know what, this, what they do to them? They will never give one for free. They sell it. So we are talking about Turkey. And, and not only that, in Turkey right now, there's a big problem. They are kidnapping kids. And they are even stealing dead bodies for their organs. The guy, he just died. They cut his chest. They take his kidney. They take his heart. And they ship it overseas. Huge mafia. This is Turkey, my friend. So don't waste your money because your money will never help anyone. The real poor one who need help, they will never get any help. The rich ones, the you know, and look and look at the hypocrisy. All the world is sending help to Turkey, but nobody, those poor in Syria, nobody's sending anything to them. Nothing, nothing. Those people they have 10 years, 12 years war. They have nothing functioning. They have no electricity. They have nothing working. And now they have the earthquake and nobody send anything. All the help is going to Turkey, which is part of the NATO. Erdogan just a week ago, he said he want to shake the ground under, under, under Athens. He will attack Greece. He said our missiles... They will arrive to to, Ath to Athens and they will shake the ground under their feet. A week after, the ground is shaking under his feet. And I say that this is not the massive earthquake which is going to happen. The dream I saw, and imagine I'm you know I don't want to claim to be a prophet. I am not. Uh, I saw a vision and when many of you contact me saying what you said have uh, come to be true uh, actually already there is two earthquake happen I said for the first one no, this is not the one and this one is not the one yet the one I saw is extremely scary so I say that Turkey is going to face a very very bad time a, a, a huge, I mean a massive destruction might destroy the whole country forever which means the country will collapse uh, <clears throat> the vision I saw I saw the earth moving like waves screaming crying tens of thousands dead flies smell they, they no uh, I mean you you see the cities are are uh, are demolished not just uh, uh, hundreds of buildings so what I saw is you know is something I hope is not going to happen but it's something beyond scary this is why when I saw this one, I saw videos how the earth is moving, jumping up and down, which is really big. I mean, 7.8 is not is not a joke, uh, but still the one I saw is really bigger. Uh, Barth, I answer you, there's no such a thing. I answered you. I said, I don't, I don't know a story about Muhammad. He thought his, his, his neighbor is an angel. You are talking about Muhammad claiming that the angel come to him in the image of his boyfriend Dahiel Kalbi so you are making a mistake I answered you already maybe you are asleep <clears throat> uh. And maybe because you are not there, I will repeat the reference here. There we go.
Actually, where is the translation here? They took it off. It doesn't say in English, it doesn't say he came in the image of Dahil Kilvi. They took it off. Oh, here we go. Actually, it says here. So, this is not his neighbor. Dahil Kalbi is the boyfriend of Muhammad. Aisha, she said that we were jealous from two people, Dahil Kalbi and Salman al Farisi. Muhammad, he spent the whole night with them, each one alone, individual. All right, I answer your question. Don't repeat again. Do we have any Muslim? Any Mohammedan? In Islam, there is many cloning. Cloning is a major part of Islam. An angel, a shaitan, his name is Al-Abiyad, he cloned Jibreel, and he gave Muhammad satanic verses, according to Muhammad. Jibreel, he cloned Dahil Kalbi, and he came to Muhammad in the image of Dahil Kalbi. Jesus was cloned by one of his disciples, so they put him in the cross. And there is many other stories. But here you notice how we can trust anything then. If the Jibreel the angel was a cloned by Shaitan, according to Muhammad, that means Shaitan, he can clone anything and he can come to us as anyone. He wish. So how Muhammad can confirm that the one he was seeing always was an angel? We have a lady, her name is Samaya. Samaya. I'm wrong? I'm wrong about what lady? I don't know. You can call me and tell me how wrong I am. You know what I'm saying? If if Shaitan, he came to Muhammad in the, uh, in the image of Jibreel. That means Shaitan, he can claim the identity of any person. He can claim the identity of Muhammad. Or Isa, Musa, Abraham, Allah. <laughs> right? So, how we can trust Islam then for anything? Because as you see, Jesus was not Jesus, it was a fake Jesus. Jibreel was not Jibreel. Once he was cloned by the devil, and Jibreel himself cloned a person, his name is Dahir Kalbi. So how we can trust anything we see? Any Muslim have an answer? <clears throat> we know when the shaitan, which is called the white, came to Muhammad in the image of Jibreel. How come Muhammad as a prophet of God could not recognize that this is shaitan. And now how we can trust that every time Muhammad was seeing someone claiming to be the angel Jibreel is not shaitan. <clears throat> Any Mohammedan? Nobody.
What do you think? I heard other Muslim tell this story, so I'm not wrong. It's not about how many Muslim they tell the story. You know, everything we have, we have a proof for it. Your books. You will answer me tomorrow? Okay, tomorrow will come. Inshallah. This is why you Muslim, you never answer anything. The religion of Inshallah, and Allah never, if Allah himself, he cannot answer, how you would answer? Look, the question is, the simple question is, they ask Allah, how many sleepers in the cave? Was Allah able to answer? No. <laughs> I mean, look how simple the question is. You do not need to use your hand. You can use your leg. Call me. What hand? You speak from your foot? Call me in Skype. Her hand is hurting now. Come on, she cannot answer. Pray to Allah, He will heal you. I mean, the Muslim they say it's crazy as an example. Muhammad he told them if you recite the chapter of uh, uh, you know the, the one about the magic. Uh, billahi, uh, you know, uh, bil falaq, min sharri ma khalaq, blah 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 blah. Or in the fil uqad, blah 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 blah. Okay. Uh, and then Muhammad himself, he was under black magic according to Muslims. So how this guy, he had the medicine and himself, he could not have a solution. So I tell you how you can fight it, yet you yourself, you are infected with it. Does that make sense? Look at this chapter, the Muslim they call it chapter. I find it one of the most funny, stupid, silly statement can be written by God. Qul, I take refuse by Allah, the Lord of the daybreak. What is that? The Lord of the daybreak? He Muslims, Allah is the Lord of the daybreak? What if before that moment he's not the Lord of that time? Very silly statement. It's like this guy just trying to make a, a, a rap a rap song. Me have no meaning. What the, the Lord of the daybreak? Well, I am the Lord of the afternoon. Hey guys, who wanna be the Lord of the evening? If there's any one of you is interested to be the Lord of Seven uh, Eleven, what is this? This is God talking. This guy is just making things up from evil of what he created. Like, what the heck? You are the one who create evil. And you are asking me to seek refuge by you from your evil? So the virus came from the laboratory of Allah. So what we do now? We seek Allah against his virus. How smart is that? And then from the evil of darkness, and by the way, this is false translation. Here it says, وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ The penis when it stand up at night. And we showed that many times from their books. This is about the penis. Aisha, she come to Muhammad, she want to have sex. Muhammad is an old man. His private part is not working no more. He is sick. He is dying. Muhammad, he claimed, when Aisha, she start playing with his hair, he's saying, I seek refuge by Allah from the evil he created. <laughs> he's trying to find an excuse why he cannot have it. And I challenge any Muslim to say, I'm lying. Who want to do it? 
and you will see the Muslims answering my lies. It doesn't say that, CP. <laughs> well, I have it. I have it. Thank you, Muslim. You write everything. We have it documented by you. We have it documented by you. This is God. And then what? Muhammad, he claimed that his penis is not working because somebody blew in the knot. <laughs> That's happened, my friend. Somebody blew in the knot, your penis is gone. And then we find the proof of that in the Hadith too. Aisha, she said, the Prophet, he was under the effect of a black magic for etc. time to the, to the point he start imagining himself having sexual intercourse with his wife. In fact, he did not. Do you see it? So Muhammad, he made the Quran claiming that the reason his penis is not working because there's an evil of witchcraft by the knot, somebody blow knot and his penis and his brain and everything. Ima Muhammad imagining. Listen carefully. This is not a dreaming. No. All of us, we dream. All of us, we dream. But we wake up, we know it's a dream. Muhammad, he think that the imagination he see is true. So now we have Shaitan who become Jibreel. We have Muhammad himself. He is hallucinating. He think what is fake is true and what is true is fake. Even his sex have no witnesses. And the wife proved that. The guy did not sleep with us. So how we can follow a man, even his sex is false. You know, when the demon, when a, when a, when a man, he was uh, infected with demon, the demon, this, they, they went crazy inside the man. And uh, the Messiah, he ordered the demon to go out of the man and they jump into pigs, right? So Muslims, what is inside Muhammad? Muslims don't believe in demon. They believe in what, as you're saying, fictions, magic, magic. So how how Muhammad tell you eat seven ajwa, recite the chapter of this and that, and then you will fight magic, and then we find that Allah sent two angels, as you see in the story here. One of them is Jibril, to find a solution. A Muslim called me once, and the debate is in the internet. He admitted that it took Allah 12 months to open the knots. Every knot, the, 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 the black magic guy, he did it 12 knots on Muhammad. It took Allah one year to open to open the, all the 12. One knot a month. You see how powerful Allah is. So according to Muslim, Muhammad was under black magic for a year. One year, Muhammad, you know, imagining things is not true. So how we can trust the guy for anything he saw? How many verses and how many Quran he delivered during the time he was under the black magic, as you Muslim claim? Which I believe is not true. I mean, there's nothing it's called black magic. And as long as we are talking about black magic, another stupid story in the Quran proving Muhammad to be stupid and false. Harut and Marut. Allah, he opened, he opened a school of magic, sending two angels. Their name is Harut and Marut. They came from Armenia, obviously. <laughs> Any Armenian here? My friend, you have your part. Your legions from Armenia, they are working here. Muhammad, he copied them as usual. He is an ear. Chapter 9, verse number 61. He's an ear. Anything he hear, he put it in the Quran. So he heard the old legend that there is two angels came from the sky sent by God. They open a school of Harry Potter and they make a, you know, and they start sitting in the broom and the ring, you know, and make stuff like you wear them, you control people, you say some magical word, like let me control you, all of you, as long as nobody is making donation, thank to, thanks to Allah. Then the room, sanka room, the broom, may they go and make a donation from the room. Ah, and now you will see everybody, 
Suddenly he became generous. When everybody is cheap, let us see if it's working. Take a beer. Make a who, who who is a Muslim want to make a magic on me? Make magic on the leaders of the country and the world. Control them, man. Once I went to uh, to a store. They are selling voodoo. You know, I was a. Uh, it was in a, in a in a beach area. I don't know. I think it was uh, Thailand or Philippine. I forgot. Philippine, Philippine. So, uh, the guy I told him. Uh, he said, how I can help you? I said, uh, well, I have a problem with my mother-in-law. He said, yeah, yeah, I know. I can't tell. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know your story. The guy now, he claimed, he claimed that his magic connection is working. He said, really, you know? He said, yeah, I know. She's causing you problems. I said, yeah. Um, so what do you think? He said, I have a solution for it. I said, but, but by the way, I am not married. <laughs> you know, they fool the fool. If you are a fool, you are a fool. So you want to play with me? You know, the guy, he said, okay, we got a fool customer. We will sell him some stupid things, bones, and that will stop his mother-in-law from bothering him. Hmm? The second he said, I have a problem with my mother. He said, he knew everything. He knew everything happening to me, everything. And then after that, I said to him, by the way, I'm not married. Everybody start laughing. And then he said, okay, it's time to go for, uh, you know, lunch. Uh, uh, we are closing, you know. <laughs> voodoo. Voodoo, voodoo, voodoo. What a stupid people. Huh? Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, always in every, every time, time of Muhammad now, after a million years, there is somebody take advantage of the fool and the silly and the naive. And there's always naive people. They believe anything. You can fool them. Like Joe Biden telling them, telling them the Republican, they want to cut the, the source of security so he can scare the, the people, you know? They, they, he knew a lot of naive there. A lot of people are ready to accept anything. Just tell them, I saw a big foot, big foot in my, black, my backyard. Everybody will watch the video. Bigfoot in your backyard, yes, but nobody can see this guy Bigfoot. Nobody. But they, he's there. Brother, he's there. And he's a Bigfoot, by the way, not small foot. It make a difference. So just come with a fiction story any time, any century, even now in the time of technology, people will believe it. Stupidity is a life. And as long as a human being exists, stupidity is a life. There is people always will believe in any garbage you give them. And those are the ones who false men like Muhammad they are waiting for. And then you grow in a society, teaching you the stupidity, generation after generation, and then they make the stupidity holy. So nobody dare to question what is holy, stupid. And because nobody dare to, 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 to challenge the stupid holy, otherwise you will lose your head. Then every head will go down, accepting the stupidity as a fact. And this is what happened with Muslims. The second one of them, he questioned it, he is dead. There's one of the caliphate. He brought a big Muslim scholar. He tied him up in the day of Al-Adha, which means the day of sacrifice. And he said, today we are going to sacrifice not a sheep, not a camel. We will sacrifice this sheikh. Why? Because he said, the Quran is created just for that. And he killed him and he killed everyone who accept his teaching. The Quran is a created. He's a Muslim. He believe in Allah. He believe in Muhammad. He believe in the Quran. But he believe the Quran is a created. They killed the guy. Rashad Khalifa.
a guy who come with the calculation of the Quran, which is nothing but wrong. I can prove it false from in two seconds, and I did many times. What the Muslim did to him? They killed him just because he said something. They don't agree. He don't. They don't agree with him. He have to take verses from the Quran to make the calculation. His calculation work. Rashad Khalifa too. He opposed the Muslims because they are worshiping Muhammad. There's a video, it's called Friday's Sermon of Rashad Khalifa. Go watch it. This guy. He said the Shahada, which is true, which is true. The Shahada of the Muslims today, and remember he's a Muslim, is nothing but polytheism. Because they are associating Muhammad name with the name of Allah and he said none of those Muslims is a Muslim they killed him I don't know if they were able to find who killed him but obviously the one who killed him is a Muslim he have access to his house easy because they found him dead in the kitchen without any break in entry into the house, which means the one who came is known. They knocked the door, he welcomed them in, and they killed him inside his house. The Muhammadan, they claim that there are people who believe in monotheism, but the fact anyone knows little bit of what monotheism is, Muslims are mushrikeen. They associate the name of their God with the name of their prophet. Not only they associate the name, they associate the knowledge of Allah with the knowledge of Muhammad. You will not find one hadith, one hadith. The Muslim they will not say Allah and uh, Allah and his mess uh, 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 Allah and his messengers knows best, or the opposite. He said, I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. Muhammad, he love it. He loved to be praised to be God. That's why his name is Muhammad. Muhammad means the praised one. Muhammad changed his name from Qatham to be the praised one. This is what Muhammad means. So if Muhammad is the praised one, who is praised to? Who is Allah? So Muhammad, he tried to replace Allah, to replace Jesus, to replace anyone to be worshipped and to be the one to be worshipped. But because he's filthy, he knew that nobody will accept him if he say, I'm Allah. So he made him worship him without saying that. So now every Muslim, when he pray, he pray on Muhammad. Any Muslim he pray, his prayer goes to Muhammad. Like when a Muslim he pray, his prayer should go to God. No, his prayer go to Muhammad. If you don't believe me, read. Among the most excellent of your days is a Friday. That's what the Muslims when they pray. It's a Friday, the gathering day. So invoke many salat on me, not blessing. This is a false translation on that day. For your salat, not a blessing again, will be submitted to me. Submitted to you. Muslims, your salah will be submitted to Muhammad. Even when he is dead, the Muhammadan, they say to him, 
but how our salat again the translation is false look at in Arabic it says salat any Muslim knows what salat mean salat mean prayer so make a lot of a prayer in that day on me for all your prayer is submitted to me then they said to him prophet of Allah how our prayer will be submitted to you when your body will be dead and decay he said oh Allah has forbidden the earth from consuming the body of the prophets and here you see how stupid the answer is because what does have to do with the question <laughs> guys you understand what I'm saying are you are you dead or alive let us say your body is not decay but aren't you dead Do you understand how stupid he is even when he answer? And then the Muslim was when Muhammad, he died, they did not bury him for three days and three nights. Because of this, he said that our body will not decay. Then we find in the Hadith, Ibn Abbas, he said, Bury your friend, he stink like all a human, they stink. So the fraud of Muhammad exposed. He stink. And then when they buried him, because now they cannot wash his body, because his meat is coming out pieces, his body decay. So how they bury him without washing him? And the excuse is, no, he's a prophet. We don't wash a prophet. Until now, zero Muhammad, and there to call us and to answer us. They thought he is the same as Jesus. He's trying to replace Jesus. You know. In fact, the last thing Muhammad he did before he died, just is telling you how holy he is. The last thing he he did before he died, he pissed. You see. When you are a person connected with God, you will feel that your death is coming. You don't feel you want to piss. And Muhammad, he died in a very horrible, painful way. He was dying slowly. Even tons of hadith says he cannot even walk no more. He can't even pray. He can't move from a house of, he have 13 wives. What happened? Muhammad, he lost his health. But isn't it, this is the prophet of God who advised you how to be healthy. He can tell you what your disease supposedly. You remember the story of the guy, he came to him, he says, my brother is sick. He told him to, bring, to drink honey. The guy, his brother is dying. And he accused him later, he screamed at him, he says, your brother stomach is lying and Allah told the truth. My friends, why you care for which channel we care for? Do you worship a channel? Does it matter which channel I am in? If you care to listen to me here or there, does it make a difference? It's a stupid YouTube virtual channel. Is that like an address? physical address you drive to what's wrong with people they are attached to a channel they cannot leave that channel look we have only like 600 people here only just because we move to different channel because they, they are confused that's it they, they cannot find direction they are like the Abdul Like the Quran, you put a dot, everything change. And the dot thing, by the way, like the, the language we read in Arabic now, it's not the language of the Quran. So everything you see here, it can it's it's way more clear than when the Quran is written. 
as an example, how we know that this, first of all, like as an example here, first word, bism. There's nothing in Arabic, it's called bism. There's no word in Arabic, bism. The Muslim scholars agree that they have to take the letter Alif off to make it easier to recite. Can you do that? Yes, we can. But you say that not even one letter is missing in the Quran. Guys, I'm speaking live to them and they are asking, is this is my professional official channel? I'm live speaking now, answering them in the chat. And they are asking if this is, so I am here doing what? I mean, do you think like YouTube give me access to all channels in the world, any channel I go to and I go live? I'm talking to you in the chat. That's mean I am with, watching this chat. Lord have mercy, I better go today before I go crazy. So everything you read now, it's way easier to read because one let one dot can change everything. Any word you can take. As an example, if we go right now, here we go. This is the Quran. The chapter of the elephant, al feel. Okay, what, how I know this is the feel? How I know that the word there is feel. The Arabic they have at that time, they don't have dots. Maybe it's uh, maybe it is mill, maybe meal, maybe qil, maybe feel. Just take a letter, uh, take a take a dot, not a letter, or add another dot in the pronunciation or uh, 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 I mean and they are not even connected if you read the, or the or, or older ones you will see how crazy reading the Arabic at that time and the funny is a person who is not even an Arab is the one who fixed the Quran but when he fixed the Quran he messed it up because now a lot of words changed Andrew Tate, he converted to Islam. Well, good for you. Look like you like you, know, you like him. He's a pimp. He can get you a job. Just, uh, you know, I think even if he's in jail now, he can give you a job in his website. Just contact him, Somaya. I mean, look at the Muslims. They are, they are proud about a pimp converting to Islam. <laughs> this, is who, this is who converted to Islam. The guy, he's a pimp. He find himself, he look dirty between the Christian and no money can clean him. But we, between Muslims, he's a hero. This is exactly what Islam is. He's like Muhammad, he's a pimp. Actually, I believe the real reason uh, 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 Tate, he converted to Islam, you know, he's trying to find a protection because he knew he was going to go to jail. That's why he has seven passports. But he like it because the Quran says it clearly that you can be a pimp, literally. As long the girls agree to work with you as a pimp, then you are fine in Islam. Any Christian, he is going to hell. You go in the Quran, you will find this. It says, force not your girls into prostitution if they choose chastity. If they choose. And if you force them, Allah is all merciful. There's no punishment. It's not sin. It is halal. This is Quran. So if you are a Mohammedan and you are thinking how to get rich, go ahead and open a pimp house. In fact, go and read the, uh, the, the, the book of Musnad Ahmad. Musnad Ahmad. See how many stories about pimp houses open. How they check their vagina when they buy them. They put women in the display and they make them naked and they buy them. For what purpose? Prostitution. This would happen here. Read the story behind this. Men, they are using women as slaves they capture from war for pimp business. Muhammad never said it's haram. In fact, Muhammad, he gave them a license saying, force them not 
if they choose a chastity, which means make an agreement. If they like it, you are fine. And even if you force them, Allah is all merciful, which means either way, it is fine. It's in the front of you. This is why only stupid or sick ones, they will convert to Islam. You cannot be smart and you convert to such a garbage religion. And look, just to show you how stupid this religion is, this verse about prostitution, the verse about it, Allah is the light of the heaven and the earth. And the Muslim, they keep saying to us, nothing like Allah. But then Allah, he compared himself to a tree. <laughs> Are you with me? You ask any Muslim how Allah look like, they say nothing like Allah. Okay. Can we compare Allah to anything? No, we cannot compare Allah to anything. So how Allah, he compared himself to a tree. Is that me saying that? And what the verse this have to do with the verse before it? Two verses before it, it's about it's okay to be a pimp. One verse after it, it's Allah is the light. What is, what is the connection? And then the similarity of his light, the similarity. Okay, I mean, look at the translation here, by the way. I mean, it's really, really funny. I think this guy who translated, he used Google. Who is the translator? Hold on. Muslim Quran translation, by the way. It's a great business. Translate the Quran. Muslim, they buy it. Just say, just name the Quran translation of Muhammad Dudu. Muhammad Pupu. Uh, I, I will not be surprised if Andrew Tate, he made a, a translation for the Quran. Even he don't speak one Arabic word. They will buy it, trust me. It's a great business. Look at this. What what is the connection with those? What is this? What is the connection with the one before it? The prophet he don't want people to come to his house. What is this? And this is one of the most stupid verses Muhammad he come beside all the other verses. According to the stupid Muhammad, bad women marry bad men. Look at the translation, by the way. And bad, look, look, look. Bad statement are for bad people. Statement? What the heck? Women are a statement now? It says here, al khabithat you idiot. I mean, what? who is the translator? Which one is one? Hold on. Statement. Muhammad Hilali and Khan. <laughs> so smart Muhammad, he come with the conclusion that bad women marry bad men, brother. And bad men marry bad women, brother. Look, we just changed the translator. Look what happened. There's no statement no more. Bad women deserve bad men. False. It doesn't say they deserve... It says bad women for bad men. There's a huge difference between them. This is destiny. This is about destiny. I mean, the translation of those Abdul is beyond the stupidity, man. Let us see this guy, Arbery. Oh, this guy is supposed to be smarter. Corrupt women for corrupt men and corrupt men for corrupt women. Stop. Have you ever heard of a stupid God? He repeat himself, isn't it? You just said she is corrupt too. Why you are saying, and corrupt women, corrupt women for corrupt men, okay? And corrupt men for corrupt women, but what difference is going to make? Already you told us that both of them, they are corrupt. As long they are marrying each other, it doesn't matter which one comes first. Like the one, she is in the right, the one in the right of the bed is the women, the one in the left is in the man, and the other, the part of the verse, the one in the right is the man, and the one in the left is the women. Are we switching the pillow? Stupidity, repeating the same thing, and then, and good women for good men, but if you, and good women, and good men for good women, but where is the wisdom? How many good women, they marry a bad man? According to the stupid Quran, bad women only married bad men as a destiny. 
and good women, they marry good men. Allah make it a destiny. But we know that this is false. There's millions of women, millions and millions of women, they marry horrible men. But they are good women. And the opposite, there's millions and millions of men who they are good men, they marry horrible women. This is wisdom. That's deep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's stupid deep. <laughs> so, you know, if you read carefully, any anything in the Quran, you will die laughing. I mean, this book, who in the world want to say such a thing? I wish this is the case. What do you guys don't you agree? We wish we wish that you know I like if you are a good man here you know no no you are not worried about marrying a bad woman. Same as a man a woman you are you are a good woman you are not worried about marrying a bad man. But this is not the scenario. This is false. And then what the verse about it before, the verse after it, what, what this verse here have to do with the verse here? Nothing. Hey, believers, don't enter houses other than yours houses. Look, what the heck? But we have to say the most wise verse in the Quran. Is this one? <clears throat> First time I did read this verse, I know I was like maybe like maybe 200 years ago. At that time, I was just 100 years old. There's no problem if you are a blind. And no problem if you are a lame. And there's no problem if you are sick. And neither in yourself if you eat in your houses. I was reading, I said, who is the idiot who wrote this? Give me his name. I mean, even Joe Biden will not say it so. Conclusion, there's no problem to eat at your house. I mean, that's deep. This is Aflatone. He did not come with this. Aristocrat did not come with this. All the big philosophers in the world, they cannot go that deep. There's no problem if you are blind and you eat in your house or if you are your foot cannot walk. And if you yourself, any one of you, not only those, eat in your house. Okay, the wisdom is over. No. Or your father houses, what the heck? Really? Thank you, Allah. We never know that before. Or your mother houses. Man, my father have a house and my mother have a house. Whew, that's deep. Or your brother house is, what the heck? I can eat in my brother house too? Amazing. Or your sister house is, man, the restaurant is getting bigger. Or the houses of your uncles, Ooh, which one? Hold on, Allah explain it all. Or your aunt, partner, partner uh, or uh, the house of your uncle, of your er, uh, aunt, uh, ma maternal, what, what the heck? Or whatever you have the key for it. Don't ever give a key for a Muslim real estate agent. He will eat your food. It's in the Quran. You give the you give the guy the key for to show your house for sale. Right away he will go to the fridge, he will eat your yogurt, he will eat your beef, he will eat your bread, and he will say it's halal. 
all your friend houses like what the heck what is this or of your friend or no problem like the, the translation as as fault it doesn't say fault haraj is different word i mean who is the, this is arbari oh boy let us see Ali Khan. Aman, Rabbi Aman. No restriction. Like this guy, he fixed it. No restriction. <laughs> no, rest <laughs> no restriction. <laughs> Technology of translation. Uh, this is better. There is no plane. This is this is more better than the previous two stupid one are making it fault and the other one make it restriction. The more the close one really here now it's blame is more close. Man, and the story continue. Okay, bra bra. So so deep, so deep. And not only that, you can eat together or eat separated. No problem. Wisdom. This is law of Allah. Please. Please don't mention this verse to Joe Biden. He will quote it in the Congress next time he go to the Congress. I'm warning you. He is an ear like Muhammad. Anything you say to him, he make it Quran. You know the thing. As long we are created by the things and we know the thing, and now we can explain the thing. However, it's very easy to understand the thing. This is the philosophy from the thing. Hmm. Uh, the verse uh, 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 after it, by the way, is even more funny. Look at this. Only those who believe, who believe, believers who believe, like believers who believe, only those are believers who you just call them believers why you are saying them who believe in Allah I mean, do you see how shortcut clear strong do believer who you just call them believers the non-believers you call them non-believers kuffar who believe in Allah and his apostle when they are with him and on a moment us affair they go not away until they have asked for his permission <laughs> muhammad he want to control the crowd nobody want to listen to him <laughs> he start talking people start leaving <laughs> the lecturer <laughs> so muhammad want to stop people from leaving when he start talking the guy is making poo, -poo. people start yawning <laughs> everybody leave muhammad want to control them don't leave Prophet, this is silly. You are saying the same thing every day. Uh, Allah gave me a verse in the Quran. It says, should not leave without my permission. Okay? He don't leave. So Muhammad, he start making a speech. There is a hundred. Fifteen minutes after, there is fifty. Thirty minutes after, there is ten. 40 minutes after, there is only Muhammad. <laughs> so don't leave with our permission, okay? <laughs> and then, if they, listen, and now if somebody have excuse, ask Allah to forgiveness. He want to make them as if they commit sin. Even if they ask for excuse, you see how faith he is? If they ask you for permission to leave, hmm, and you grant them, ask Allah to forgive them, which means now they will feel, man, that's really bad. He need to ask Allah to forgive us for what we what we did, just because we left, even after the permission. Do you see how evil he is? So he's trying to control them, even to sit. Nobody want to sit. Nobody want to listen to him. How I can force them to stay?
Anyway, by the way, if you enter the, our YouTube channel and you leave without my permission, my friend, you commit a big sin and Allah will punish you. I know a person as an example. He was a, a very powerful man and he used to carry, uh, you know, his, uh, his wife all the way to the stairs, upstairs. Now, because he, is, he left without my permission, I'm telling you, he cannot carry his wife no more. He is carrying the zaraf, the giraffe. <laughs> it's a sin if you leave. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to bring Zachary Nayak here. He might, he might uh, get upset. Griffin Brent. First of all, everything you think is a lie. Because Zachary Nayak, I just mentioned your name. You just jump in the conversation. How you can do that, man? Griffin Brent. First of all, I am listening to you all the time. Uh -huh. Are you spying at me? You keep back, Griffin Brent. I'm going to spy at you, and you are live on YouTube. Okay, I, you get a point here. Exactly. And now I get the point, so I'm going to butt you. So I'm listening to you on YouTube, and everything you think is a lie. Like what? What is the lie I said? It says here that you cannot leave even if Muhammad is speak, unless you get a permission. And even after permission, you need Allah to forgive you. Did you commit sin? Great and Prince. First of all, if you met that bit of Brother Muhammad, you are admitting yourself. What? What? I do not understand that. That is too too fast. Can you make a slower? Christian Prince, you are very slow. And I agree. You are very, very, very slow. So I'm going to speak slower. So listen to me carefully. First of all, if you leave the speed of Prophet Muhammad, that means you are missing the golden speed. Allah Prophet, he speak with them. So if you miss it, you are losing. So Allah may Allah forgive you. Ah, the Prophet is speaking with and dumb. Yeah, I have to agree. He is so dumb, man. He said that the sun set in a murky water. For the four Christian breath, the Prophet did not say that. He said, and if it, it is, sit in the murky water. Where in the Quran it says as if it is? Can you show it to me? First of all, Allah, he did not say it, but we can hear it. What the heck? Allah did not say it, but you can hear it? How you can do that? Christian Prince. First of all, I'm going to sue you, and I'm going to kill you. Uh, you're going to kill me? Christian Prince, I did not say I'm going to kill you. I said I'm going to tell you. Oh, okay, you see. Uh, exactly. Prophet Muhammad, he said that the kuffar, Satan, he pits in their ears. Ah, Satan, he pits in my ears. But hold on. The Prophet, he did not say about the kuffar. He said about the Muslims. Why you are lying? First of all, Christian Prince. It's true. Prophet, he said about the Muslims. So if the Satan, he pissed in the ears of the Muslim, for sure, he pissed in your ears. What the heck? <laughs> Any one of you can write, can, <laughs> can write a scenario like me, life on air? <laughs> yeah, all those things I just made up. I hope Muslim will not go and say, Zachary Knight did not say that. Because they would do, trust me, they would say Christian Prince is lying. Zachary Knight did not say that. Yeah. So, uh, Shaitan, he piss in your ears. Oh boy. True wisdom of a true prophet. He received a true pissing information. From Bismillah. How the Prophet Muhammad he explained how we and why we have walks in our ears. So it turned to be Shaitan, he piss in your ears, sleep in your nose, jump in your mouth, and play with your anus, and he round himself around your penis when you have sex if you don't say the name of Allah. What do you want more? This is why Muslim men, when they sleep, they don't sleep in their stomach because shaitan will do boom, boom to them. There's a there's a Shia sheikh. I don't want to play his video because they are flagging my videos. Uh, he claimed that all Muslim Sunni are homosexual. Why? I made a video about it, actually. Anyone remember the video? Uh, uh, his name is Yasser al-Habib. So he claimed that all Muslim Sunni all Muslim Sunni are homosexual. Why? 
When shaitan, he noticed that they are not from the followers of Ahlul Bayt, which means the family of Muhammad, which means Ali and Hassan and Hussein and Fatima, those the Shia they worship. Uh, shaitan, he placed his finger in their anus and he made them homosexual. <laughs> so I wrote a comment for him underneath of the video. I said, so if he convert later to Shiaism, what will happen? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Oh boy. <coughs> yeah, this is uh, this is Yasser Al Habib. He have a TV station. I think he live, I don't know, in England. Uh, you know, the the West the West sadly became the terrorist nest. Everybody teach hate, everybody this is where the West what the West become. Look where they live. Yeah. So imagine Every Muslim Sunni is a homosexual because Shaitan he put his finger in his anus and he push it hard, and this is why they enjoy it when they get older. It is scientifically proven to be true. I wish I can play for you some videos of their videos. I mean, their videos are really crazy. <clears throat> All right. Anyway, I think we have enough for today. And as you see, there's no Mohammedan join us. Uh, you know, uh, update your friends. Tell them that we are now in the Arabian Prophet for some time. We call it Christian Prince. We changed the name. This is the same as Arabian Prophet channel. Christian Prince too. Uh, we changed the name. So tell your friends for now, for some time, two months, three months, four months, we will see. And then we go back. We switch between channels so we can always have backup between channels. Otherwise, channel is not really important. What is important is what we say in the life. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. I hope you have a good time. Feel free to download the video, take notes, um, share it, download it, do whatever you want. As you know, I don't keep my videos. So if you are a person seeking knowledge and seeking reference, take notes at least uh, before we delete them. Or you can maybe the best way is to save them making your archive so later anytime and you can name every video by some point uh, you like or even you can record in the screen a certain part of the video and save it you know like short part in the part you like you think it's good to to have i mean do your work so you can always have reference for one day a christian prince will not come live on air it's going to happen sooner or later Nobody, my friend, live forever. That's why we write books and we make videos. So when we go, we will not leave your children alone. And nobody can fool them. So our work is very important. But if nobody read and nobody see and nobody hear, then even good work is no good. So be careful. Prepare yourself. The devil is strong. The devil is everywhere we hear every day how liberals trying to penetrate our our churches trying to make them churches of the devil promoting false ideas false belief like homosexuality uh, uh, fornication uh, everything wrong they are trying to make it right and okay that is not christianity my friend any church will promote such a thing leave it this is not the church of the Lord. This is satanic church. Anyone, any priest, he say to you, it's okay. He is the devil himself. The book, our book is the Bible. Is not a priest. Is not a bishop. Anyone, he bring to you scriptures other than the scriptures which is in the book. He is serving the devil. And the Messiah, he told us to be aware of false teachers and false prophets who come to you wearing clothes of a shield. Those are the priests.
There's a lot of them these days. They are trying to destroy your children, drive them into sin, claiming that it is not a crime to commit a crime against God. Remember, my friend, God, He took Adam and Eve out of heaven for disobeying Him, for eating a fruit. Fruit. Do you see how easy to get out of heaven? The apple, the fruit. But this is not simple. You disobey God. So when those false teachers, they try to ease sin on you, to make you believe that sin is normal, sin is your lifestyle, sin is the good thing to do, God love everybody. My friend, no, God don't love everybody in the day of judgment. In the day of judgment, there's billions will go to hell. So I warn you. God loved everybody when he come first time to save you. And he told you already what is wrong. Don't listen to those garbage, false teachers. They are trying to take you to hell. And they will be in hell themselves. In fact, they will be the first one to go to hell, trust me. For the sake of a fruit, disobedience caused Adam and Eve to be out of heaven and us too. So those who tell you all this kind of sin is okay, especially the ones which is really out of the line. But for God, all sin is sin. All sin is a crime against God. Don't listen to them. Never obey them. And never go to a church. Promote sin. You leave it immediately. Immediately. If you want to examine any church, any priest to see if he is a man of God or not, ask him two questions. What he think about homosexuality and what he think about Islam. If he gave you a particular answer, particular correct answer, he is no Christian. Leave the house of the devil and warn other Christians not to stay there. Never support the devil. Otherwise, you are part of his plan and you are serving him. A Christian man, yesterday I just posted an article that FBI are watching people who they are speaking against homosexuality. I don't know if you saw it. This is real. The FBI, so right now the FBI are angry from me. Well, I say I fart on you and I fart on the FBI, and I fart on Joe Biden, and nobody will make us change our holy book. Our holy book is holy. Our Lord is our Lord. And we disobey the devil, and we obey one Lord. We have only one master. We fear nobody except the lose of salvation and the love of God. So never let them make them scare you. What they will do, the FBI, they will put me in jail. Come and put me in jail. What a stupid liberals. Your evil is went beyond imagination. And all of those who they are working against Christians, they will be punished by God himself. Just wait. God is not watching only. God is working too. The Messiah, he says, I am I am working and my father working too. And we are victorious. And you will lose. 
You know, when you see such a thing in the news that FBI is targeting Christian churches and listening to their speeches, how silly, how stupid. They have hundreds of billions of dollars of drugs smuggling into USA. And you are spying at churches, spying at Christians. We are the danger. <laughs> Can you believe it? How in the world this garbage can can be true? And then you have a every every one of those Democratic Party when you give them the office, they take an oath on the Bible. This is why I say to you, my friend, if you are an American and you vote, or if you are Australian, or if you are Canadian and you vote for liberals, you are voting for Antichrist. Go watch the news. This is real. This is FBI agent reporting what happened and what's happening. This is real. This is what happened when you Christian don't go and do your job. They think they can scare us. They think, oh, now everybody will hear that FBI is watching. They will not open their mouth. We open our mouth and we fart at you and let us see what you can do. Here we go. I'm speaking in public. And for sure, the FBI, they know who you, I, I am. You think we can fear you? We follow our book and the book says what is wrong, what is right. It's not you. They are not stupid FBI. They are evil FBI. You know, I used to respect those agencies, but then I noticed how filthy they are. I mean, Trump, even though I don't like the guy anymore, for he is stupid too. But they fabricated, he is a spy for the Russian, he worked for the Russian, and everybody turned to be false. Even they fabricated document to make that guy look guilty. They have the computer of the son of the president for three years, until now there's nothing against him. <laughs> and they are busy watching churches because the churches, they are saying homosexuality is sin. Fornication is sin. You cannot say that. No, we can. Trust me, we can. And let us see what you can do about it. FBI. Stupid idiots. You know, uh, we are the only one who don't seek violence. So why are you watching us? We are the one who says, love your enemy. So what are you afraid of? You are afraid from the Bible, don't you? The same as Muslim countries. They forbid the Bible. They forbid Jesus. They forbid anything have to do with the Christianity. They are antichrist. They fear our book. Anyway, I hope we have a good time together and we learn something good. And always stand for what is right. Stand for your faith. Fear nobody. The second you start fearing them, the second they win. Nothing Nobody can lose any any fight. Doesn't matter if it is real war or you know spiritual war, except a coward. 
I don't know how many times you saw someone jumping on the chair because she saw a cockroach. Cockroach. Okay, why you jump on the chair? Because you saw a cockroach? I'm afraid. Well, that cockroach won. He took your room, your place, and you run. He's a cockroach. And this is how some, they think that they are powerful, when the fact they are a cockroach. If you are scared, even a cockroach can win against you. It's a fact. Brave people never lose, even when they lose their life. The real loser is the one who is a coward and become a coward. It's not all the FBI. It doesn't matter, you know, does it matter really who is in the top of the agency, my friend? Uh, for sure not all the FBI because there is some good FBI reporting what they are doing. We agree. But we are talking about what the FBI is doing for long now. But look like the majority of the FBI now, they are like this. I mean, how they can do that even to the president himself, fabricate document about him. They keep the the guy busy, and they they made us pay a lot of our 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 money to the government uh, 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 just to investigate Trump collusion with the Russian, and then it turned to be all of it. It's a fabricated document, and this is the difference, by the way, between Republican leaders and Democrat leaders. When Republican they take the office. They keep all the enemies in the major office, like Trump. He took the presidency. He did not change the command of the army. All the commands of the army are made, hired by Obama. All. Trump, he did not even change one. When this is his decision, he can change them all. He keep everybody in the same place, everybody hired by Obama in the same place. How stupid Trump is. This is why there is infestation in the high offices in the government. Because even when you have your own president-elect, he don't do his job. He was busy with Saudi Arabia. He was a stupid to the bones. I like this guy, DeSantis. Like right now, he is screwing Disney, who they are trying to teach our kids false teaching. You know, when Disney, they built their empire in uh, Florida, they made them, give them an exception of self-governing. Can you believe it? Just to make the investment. And now they strip them off that. So they have to obey the law of the state of Florida. So I hope that this guy, this man, they are saying he was going to go for election. I hope he will go, not Trump. It sounds like this guy is going after them in a very smart way. That's why I like him. Trump, he wasted his time doing nothing. He was an idiot. He was busy overseas making money. He's a money worshiper. This guy is a cleaning the swamp for real. Uh, like you send you send uh, uh, you send your kids to Disneyland to what to watch Mickey Mouse they are teaching them all evil stuff you know I mean even even children place became a place of a, a promotion for uh, uh, for evil stuff they, they will not leave anything clean the devil want to take over everything.
This is why I like this guy. This guy, he he you know he is a smart. He go after them. Read carefully what he's doing. And not only that, I mean, every day I see news from this guy. He is cleaning the swamp. This is why if this guy become a president, that will be the biggest disaster for the corrupt one in USA. So let us see what will happen. <clears throat> anyway, most of you are people from overseas. You have nothing to do with USA. But I think the same happening everywhere. They are trying to promote their agenda, forcing themselves on you. Uh, you know, you, you want to be a homosexual? Okay, be a homosexual. Who's holding you? What does that mean? Why you want to force yourself on me? Why you want to make me? I have to like you. Why I have to like you? Do you have to like me too? What does that mean? So we stand against their evil and we will not let them for themselves you want to live your own life live this is a country give a freedom for everybody there's even beaches for nude people go walk with your penis there but don't go to my house with your penis and tell me i what do you do with your penis this is your business uh Anyway, the Lord have mercy on the stupid ones. Any question before we finish for today? Feel free to download my videos before I delete them. As you know, I don't keep my videos. Uh, and uh, subscribe if you like it. We have uh, more than one channel, but, but we are going live in this one for now. And until I see you soon again, I say may the Lord bless you, stay strong, stay faithful, and don't let people play with your mind and accept what is wrong. Wrong always will be wrong, and right always will be right. No matter what time, no matter what year, no matter what century, wrong is wrong, bad is bad, good is good, and God is good. I mean to that. See you soon. Take care. But I mean, again.